Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Wendy. Today we're gonna to be doing three Christmas farmhouse DIYs from the Dollar Tree. And I started with these bells that I found and I noticed they had this checkered pattern and so I wanted to make that into buffalo check somehow. So I'm gonna be using this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I got it for half price, $5. This was at Dollar Tree as well for a dollar and it's super cute I think with the burlap little sack. This lamb's ear is from Walmart for $2. Some wire cutters and paddle wire, hot glue gun and some Waverly white chalk paint and some apple barrel black paint. We're gonna use that to make our different grays and make the buffalo plaid. So to start with, we're gonna get our bells ready by just taking off the price tag and the little shiny stuff at the top. And I decided that I wanted to paint the entire base with a white uh, foundation so that we could have an evenly distributed color um, to start with on the base and the handles were really good for hanging on to it and I still ended up getting paint all over but it was a nice coverage on on the metal or plastic shiny plastic too you want to make sure that you get the inside of the bell because you will kind of see on the on the inside and then once you're done painting the entire bell then you can paint that handle those probably won't show but just in case some of the greenery is you know on one side or the other if it does show it'll be white so we're gonna give both bells two coats to give it a pretty solid coverage and then I got a tip from one of our viewers that a hair dryer would help with the dry time and it really did. So I was very appreciative of that. So now I'm going to pour some of the white and mix it with some black to get our darker gray shade. Um, I got these little containers at the Dollar Tree and it helps to keep the paint um, wet so it doesn't dry out. I, I noticed I was using a lot of paint and losing it. So now I'm gonna try and figure out how to do the actual buffalo check uh, pattern. And so I will leave a um, kind of a um, graph in the description box to, to help you so you don't have to try and figure it out yourself. But I'm gonna start with the dark gray and we just go every other square. I'm using a paintbrush that has a flat edge and it's a it's a pretty good paintbrush so that will definitely help. You still are not going to get perfect lines, but we want to make sure that it is that you know that this is homemade and not, you know, we don't want it perfect. So that's a good thing because it definitely is not. Um, but I'm just doing the tops first because you have a nice flat line with the side of the brush. So since I'm going one way, it's a lot easier just to do one side and then you're gonna flip it over and do the bottom half um, all the way around. And then after you get this layer done, then you'll move on to the next row, which is not exactly how you're supposed to do it, but you'll see what I end up doing in a minute. So now I'm gonna add the black in between the two darker grays. And because the little checkers on this uh, belt were lifted, it ended up where there was like a white line in between all of the squares. And at first I just thought that was the way it was gonna have to be, but I realized I'm, I'm not doing the right pattern um, and that there has to be uh, another uh, lighter gray in between so I figure that out and I go back and then I'm I'm gonna cover the ones that are supposed to be a light gray and then leave the ones that are dark gray but the lines between each of the squares um, I just I'm gonna go back and fix that because it looked like mosaic instead of buffalo check but here it is um, once I got all the different colors on now I'm just gonna take my same paintbrush and do a black edging all the way around the bottom of the bell. And I think it turned out really cute. It looks like it's um, almost quilted. 
So I, I like the way it worked out. It took a lot of time, so you do have to have some patience in doing this. Um, but most of that time was trying to figure out um, you know, what my pattern was supposed to be and then my mistakes and which brush to use. So now I'm gonna add the greenery and I got this at Hobby Lobby for $2.50. Um, and then I'm gonna use a black bow, the Dollar Tree little um, bush thingy. And then I'm gonna just connect the two rings at the top using one of those pieces of garland, which I just cut off, and then just using it as a source of, of connecting it, but at the same time, you're gonna use it for the greenery embellishment. That'll give it a base so that you can put more goodies on the top there. So I'm just wrapping it over and getting it to the length that I want, and then I twist it around so that it secures the two bells together. So now I'm going to add a second piece so that it's just a little fuller and then you can't see the rings very well at all, um, which it wouldn't be a bad thing if it did, but it's just part of the mechanism. I just wanna see the bells and the embellishments. So I'm taking now that Dollar Tree little bush and I'm gonna just clip off all the branches so that I can have a different kind of greenery on top of the generic um, vine one. So I just hot glue different pieces to different areas and ultimately I'm going to have a bow, bow in the middle so um, I want everything uh, leaning toward the middle. So um, now I'm going to make my bow and as you've seen probably a million times before we're just going to do the fold over method. You want to check to see about how big you want your bow and I just do three loops on each side and leave a little tail on each end and then you're gonna pinch it in the middle after you fold it in half so you get the middle and then um, use either twine or um, a chenille stem or wire whatever you have on hand this is a chenille stem and then just fluff up your little loops and one of the tails will be toward the front you want to pull that towards the back and and it'll go um, and then just hot glue it to the middle. And then I added some of these red berries and just cut off the wire and place those where you want them to be. And then every bell needs a bell. So I put these little jingle bells also from the Dollar Tree, um, just using my hot glue, put them in there. There's no need to really wire them, but you could just for more stability. And then just dovetail your ends and then I like to kind of fluff them up and give them a little bump and then I want to go ahead and snow it up using my Waverly white chalk paint and a foam brush. I just wiped over the um, greenery just to get the tips and make it look a little lighter and it also reveals your um, glue gun strings and then at the bottom I took some more of the white chalk paint and just gave it a little brush to just kind of give it a snowy look but I think they turned out really cute and um, you can put these at different places and hang it on the you know whatever like a hook or something and I just hot glued a piece of ribbon and I folded it backwards so that the um, smaller end would be what you actually hang it on I'm just putting it on my uh, blanket ladder that my brother-in-law made for us and um, but it can go anywhere generally if you put it against the wall the little bells will kind of stick out but if you hang it on a hook or if you have a shelf that has the little hooks on there or like this blanket rack um, it really just adds so much you could even hang it on a buffet handle or anything like that but i think it turned out really cute so for our next project, we're gonna be making an advent wreath. And for this, I got four vases from the Dollar Tree, three purple and one pink, um, some eucalyptus leaves from Walmart, and those were $2 per bunch, and there's quite a few in each bunch. And then at the Dollar Tree, they were kind of picked over as far as their greenery, so I got these. Um, they're not too cute, but they'll have new life pretty soon. And then I found the green Christmas tree that we're gonna use as some additional greenery. Um, 
this uh, burlap ribbon I got from Walmart, and I want to say it was about $4. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but it's very thick and sturdy. And then some jute twine, four Dollar Tree candles, the little pillar candles. We're gonna cover up the silver part. A chenille stem for the bow, and then a smaller one for the little sides. Um, four of these tags. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna use either black or white for the writing on those tags, so I'll decide later but also this 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath form. Um, I usually have a few of these on hand and I'm gonna use my Cameo Silhouette. Um, so I got some white vinyl and some Dollar Tree transfer tape. It's actually contact paper, but everybody was so sweet to tell me I should use this. The Cameo mat and all of the supplies um, that you would normally need. I'm gonna go ahead and take off all the red from the stem and take the price tag off and get it ready. But it's just gonna be the greenery part that we're gonna use. And I'm gonna get that down with some paddle wire and just um, gather it so that it just goes all in one direction and kind of just curve it around with the, the stem and, and the leaves and, and the greenery so that it follows the form of the wreath in a circular pattern. And then just using that paddle wire, attach it in a couple places and it'll stay on there. Um, but this way you can still manipulate the leaves and, and move it around. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on both uh, of those stems. And I think I have four here that I'll be using. So I'm gonna do that for all four of them. So because I was short of a supply of greenery and picks and things, I decided to use this tree to um, just cover the rest of the wreath because I'm gonna cover it on top of that with some eucalyptus leaves. And so I just hot glued all of these pieces after I cut them off of that little tree and it um, covered over the wire so you don't see the wire and made a nice little base. Um, I've been shopping since then, so I have more picks, so I won't have to do this. And when, if you were to make this wreath, um, you know, just if you, it'll be a lot easier if you have more of the, the picks and greenery. So now I'm just going to cut off the eucalyptus leaves, and I used two bunches uh, total and just place them down. And if you notice, everything is coming uh, to one point and that's gonna be the front of our advent wreath. So I'm just hot gluing all of the little branches into the greenery below and um, just going in one direction on one side and then in the opposite direction on the other side and then it'll meet in the middle towards the back. So as most of you probably already know, the Advent wreath has a lot of symbolic meaning. And so the circle itself is to represent God's unending love. And because it's without beginning or end, that's why it's in the shape of a circle. So I'm gonna use those little pieces. I'm gonna keep those little pieces aside. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make the bow for the front and we're gonna do um, three loops on each side. And then this is really heavy duty burlap. So it's, um, it's very stiff and it's kind of hard to get that pleat in the middle. So you need a full Chanel stem um, to, to grab onto it because it's so thick. And then just wrap it a few times in the back and then fluff out the little, um, loops and make sure you pull that other tail that's in front towards the back 
and then we're going to attach that with some hot glue uh, quite a bit of hot glue in this case because it is such a heavy duty bow um, and i'm also going to attach it with the chanel stem so it'll reach all the way around and then just flip it over and twist it a few times and then i'm going to tuck in the little tails and using those smaller chanel stems i'm going to attach it so that it doesn't move either and push it in through to the back twist that as well and then give the um, ends the dovetail just so it looks cute and complete So since I want this advent wreath to look kind of rustic, I'm going to take the jute twine and hot glue that to cover the um, silver glitter on the candles. And I just start at the beginning and then wrap it around um, so that it's covering that up. And after you wrap, you're gonna push it up so that it gets as tight as possible. Then when you get to the end, you just take another dab of hot glue and place the twine in there so that it stays, cut it off, and then do that for all four of them. And then we're gonna use the vases, but we're gonna use them upside down so that they look more like candle holders. And so I just, in order to make the candle stick or stay on top so that it didn't fall, I wanted to give it some security, so I hot glued some tacks to the bottom. You could probably use two um, just to make them stay totally in place, but this way it'll keep them a little more secure on the top of the candle holders. So then after I get all of those ready, I'm going to measure to see how big I want my words. Um, to be so I go into my silhouette suite and I used um, a font called Apple Chancery and I'm not sure if this was already in the inventory of fonts but if you don't have that you can get it from uh, defont.com and I'll put the link in the description box so I cut out those words and then I cut those apart which I shouldn't have done that I should have kept them all together but that's an afterthought so then I'm just going to take off the top part of the vinyl and leaving the letters on the backing and then I'm going to weed out the insides of each of those letters and I'm using my silhouette weeding tool and then after I get all of the letters weeded and taken off, um, I'm going to put transfer tape on top of all of the words and, that's, and then I'll cut those apart as well. So after I used my uh, squeegee to push down those letters really well, I'm going to take off the backing of the transfer tape and then, or of the vinyl, and then I'm going to place my word in the middle of the, the jar and make sure it's a clean surface. Um, push it down with your squeegee again. And then I was so happy at how easy this came off. and. The, here's how it looks with the white letters on the colored glass. I think it looks really pretty. So each week of Advent, um, the four weeks before Christmas, has a word associated with each of those weeks. And the first week is hope, second is faith, and then the third week is joy, and then the fourth week is peace. So that's going to be the words that we put on each of those candle holders. And then each of them have a name. So for example, for the first week, it's the prophet's candle. And that is the candle that reminds us that Jesus is coming. The second one is the Bethlehem candle, and it's 
uh, symbolic of Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem. Then we have the, the shepherd's candle in the third week, and that is to remind us of the joy the world experienced at Jesus's birth. And then the fourth one is the angel's candle, which represents peace on earth and goodwill toward men. So I was playing around with different fonts and I was going to do this fun one because I want to teach my family and my, um, well, my grandkids, the different meanings and what the Advent wreath is really all about, but it didn't look good. I thought it was kind of a fun uh, font, but it didn't look good with the uh, writing that we had from the vinyl letters. So I changed it up again as I often do and I made it into a more cursive looking uh, handwriting and then tagged each of those candles and put uh, the twine through the hole of the tag for each of the corresponding candles. And in any kind of cursive writing, even if you don't like your handwriting, if you do downstrokes and make it like a faux calligraphy, I promise you, you will even love your own uh, cursive writing. It just makes any any writing look so pretty and elegant and, and professional. So it's not that I have really good handwriting, it's that it's camouflaged by the faux calligraphy downstroke method. So after I get done, I'm going to tie these to the twine. And one thing that I noticed is that sometimes if you've ever had this problem when tying a bow, it can sometimes be sideways or crooked. And if you ever have that problem, just untie it and go the opposite direction um, and just start over because it will go in the correct direction direction or just you know be straight um if you go over I, I it's hard to explain it but um you just start over and go the opposite direction of what you did the first time and also if you have a problem if your twine's too thick um to stick through a hole of a, a tag just cut it in a diagonal direction and it'll go right through there a lot easier so here it is with the tag attached to it and then remember those little pieces that I said to put aside well we're gonna stick those into the twine bow and just give it a little greenery so now I'm gonna take a charger from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna hot glue that to the bottom of the wreath so that the candles can sit on top of it and you don't have to move it into you know pieces so um, I just put a lot of hot glue and got that stuck down and then I'm going to place some pine cones throughout in just different places and if you do have any of the wire form showing um, just this will cover that up as well. You could also use some ornaments or anything that you have on hand. Um, and then again, just using um, some greenery, you can tuck those into different places to hide um, any showing spots that you don't want showing. So just um, fill in once you get everything attached and get it as full as, as you want it to be. Then we're gonna place the candles in order, which we have the four weeks are hope, faith, joy, and peace. Joy is the third week and it's always in pink. And the reason is because that's considered um, Rejoice Sunday, which means we're almost there. It's also called Godet, um, not God, G-O-D, but Godet, it's uh, G-A-U-D-E-T-E. Um, and it's, I believe, a Latin word for rejoice. So um, 
And then we're gonna take the leftover eucalyptus and kind of weed it through the candles in between. And I faced all the candles at the four corners so you, that you can see it from all four sides, no matter where you are. So I'm putting this in the middle of my table and I actually found this um, tin tray uh, that I got from Ross a long time ago, but it happened to fit exactly the same uh, circumference of the, the platter. So I set it inside there and then I put it on, I put it all on top of the Lazy Susan so that it turns and obviously this is optional, but just so that you could see all four sides. Our final project, I'm going to be using another one of these green Christmas trees from Dollar Tree. Some of these berries in the red. This is a really good red. Um, and then this is some poster board that I had cut off from uh, another project. It was the Candyland project, but you just need about, I don't know, four or five inches of it. And I was so excited to find these. I couldn't believe these were actually at the Dollar Tree and they're I mean kind of thin but the little fur feels really good and it's it's super cute and then to tuck into the toe you just need a towel of some sort this is happens to be a Dollar Tree one and then some pine cones um, these come in a pack of two these little trees at the Dollar Tree again and I'm just gonna use one and then again another one of these little bushes the little cotton bushes from Dollar Tree and then we have some jute twine and then a big can of whatever it doesn't matter but a big 40 ounce um, something heavy so that it'll stand and then our regular glue gun and scissors so I'm first gonna take out the little paper that's inside of that stocking and stuff that towel into the toe so that it's um, nice and full and then I'm going to take the can of beans and stick that in there as well. And then that gives it a nice base and it stands up um, pretty well. So now I'm going to take the piece of cardboard or poster paper and that's what's going to hold it open at the top. And so I just folded it real small and then I opened it up inside. It was a lot easier to do it that way. So now I'm gonna take my tree and open it up, but I'm gonna keep the back kind of flat so all of the greenery goes towards the front, the little limbs. And this is gonna go inside the um, stocking. And I needed a lifter, so I used an old um, ribbon spool and hot glued that little um, bush onto it. And then I'm gonna hot glue the green tree and the little white tree where I want those to go just peeking out of the top of the stocking and then I'm gonna place some berries here and there and just cut them off of the the pick and then decide where I want those and after I do then I'm gonna hot glue those down and then um, put them you know distributed evenly and where they're they look cute and then um, I put one of them attached to the front front side there. Um, it was it needs to have something to attach to the bottom of the tree and the the spool, and that all needs to go on top of the can of beans. So I had to take everything out and then attach it with hot glue, and then I'm gonna hot glue that big foam piece to the bottom of that then that whole mechanism oh and I also tied a piece of jute twine around the tree so it was more secure and then I'm gonna place it all back inside of the stocking I'm doing that even though you can't see it but here it is and I'm gonna hot glue the poster board all the way around. I made my foam piece a little bit too big so you can kind of see in the back right there where it's sticking out but it doesn't show from the front so I went ahead and left it but if you do this make sure you get the right size so that it's not poking out like that. It's kind of like panty lines I don't know but because I wanted it to kind of lean in the natural way a, a stocking would it kind of kept 
tilting over and it wasn't staying in place because it was a little heavy at the top. So I needed to glue that foam board to the top of the can. And so I had to do a little surgery here and I cut a little slit in the back and then just poured in the hot glue and attached it to, uh, you know, pushed the foam to the can of beans and it stuck really well. Then I'm using one of these um, black bows that you've seen me use from my sister's 50th birthday. And I hot glued a little piece of greenery to the front and then put the bow on top of that. And then took some berries and just did a little, two little bunches at the top there so that it just gave it a little more embellishment. And then fluffed him all up and he was ready to go. I think this turned out so cute and it's so farmhouse rustic. I love it and I, you can put it anywhere. I wanted to show you that it's, it does stand on its own, but I don't have my Christmas decorations up yet, so I had to kind of just set this up um, by itself, but um, it's, it's sturdy and it stays in place um, and it looks so cute. I can't wait to decorate with like a lamp or some other things to um, show that piece off. So if you like this video, I would sure appreciate if you shared and comment and give it a thumbs up. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook and please consider subscribing to my channel so we can grow it even more. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember the reason for the season. We'll see you next time. Bye.